Ladies and gentlemen, I am beyond excited to introduce to you someone who is really a legendary uh, filmmaker, someone who's made my favorite film and definitely made my favorite film of the year. He is a two-time Oscar winner. He is here for us. He is exhausted. He is tired. But he has come to share with you his knowledge and his love. The one, the only. Please welcome Mr. Peter Fairley. <laughs> That's the uh, first time I ever got announced as a two-time Oscar winner, which is, <laughs> sounds good. Yeah, it does sound yeah, good. Yeah, it's better than uh, the, uh, what do you call it, winning the uh, uh, Razzie. Yeah, oh, the Razzie <laughs> which I've Award. Which won, too. You have won that, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that movie. That's my, uh, my nephew, uh, okay, Finn, come, come over, and come his in. buddy, Tim. Come, Tim, come in, come in, come in. Come in. Yeah. Come yeah. a little closer. Yeah. Come yeah. on in. Yeah. You can... <laughs> Come on, come on in, come on in. There's a seat right there for you. There it is, we want David. Uh, Peter, this is so exciting for, you know, to have you here. Thanks for having me, and I, I really appreciate it. You were so supportive during this whole thing. You know, it's a long run when you start getting into the award season, and it's ups and downs the whole time, but this guy was always a very friendly face and really supportive, so I'm happy to be here. No, 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 I think that you made an important film, not for just for, uh, you know, for you, but for, the, for America. Oh, thanks. And I'm saying it's an important thing. And I have to tell you a little story that yesterday uh, I was having lunch and I was telling someone that you were coming mm -hmm. and she was talking about the movie. And, and she reacted like she started crying because she couldn't believe what was happening to her. Was it a famous actress? No, no, just a normal person. Because actually, I got a very unusual, this is a name, I'm dropping a huge name here, I'll tell you up in, in advance. <laughs> Out of the blue, I got a phone call, I don't know her, Barbara Streisand. Oh, wow. Yeah, she called me last night, just some, got my number and just talk, tell me how much she liked the movie, but at the end she goes, are you going to Bernard's class tomorrow? No. <laughs> I swear to God. I said, I, I said, yeah. 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 I was shocked. I was shocked. I said, yeah, how do you know that? She goes, I heard that. I couldn't believe that you could, you have that energy. I was like, no, it's, this is, you on a high. Are you kidding me? You know. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, no, so. So she knew that, yeah. 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 This person is doing this water. And I said, come. Oh, yeah. And he's here. I know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Now he was. She was once interested in a movie that I had written. Uh huh. And I so I've known her, and I know her husband, sort of. Right. You know, he not, was standing right behind her the whole time I was talking to. Oh yeah. Oh, oh. He's he's yeah. he's a very good actor too. Oh yeah, he's James Brolin. Yeah. yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. You know, you have the most incredible sort of uh, history of how you started. Uh, you come from a place called Rhode Island, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And you started not really knowing what you want to do. Is that true? Right. Yeah. I wasn't. I wasn't one of these kids running around with you know cameras when I was like Spielberg. Was like never. Eight years old. Okay. Here's my second name drops. Steven Spielberg. <laughs> so the other night when we won, Spielberg's one of the producers. So he was at the after party and and it was unbelievable. You know. And he said, "You've been dreaming about this your whole life." I said, "Well, no, not really." <laughs> I, I swear to God, he goes, but he goes, when you get moved out here, I've been here 30 years, he goes, do you probably, many nights, dreamt about having an Oscar? I said, nah, honestly, I really didn't. I, I said, you know, it never really occurred to me because we're making these comedies and that just wasn't going to be part of it. And right. it, it, wasn't, it wasn't something I thought about. And I was more than happy with what we had, you know, being able to make comedies and being out there. But this never crossed my mind to win an Oscar until... Uh, we made this, when we were making the movie, I was looking at these guys thinking, God damn, these guys are good. They might get Oscars. I thought of that. I thought these guys could get Oscars for this, but it's still, I'm not thinking us. And then when we won Toronto, the Toronto Film Festival, then that's probably the first time I thought, hmm, 
Maybe we could win an Oscar. But it wasn't a lifetime dream, and, and it wasn't making films either. It was in my mid-20s. I was actually a salesman, and, um, and, and I wasn't a very good one. <laughs> and, and I remember, actually, I turned 24. On my birthday at 24, I remember thinking, I'm getting up there. You know, I'm, I'm not like an, a, you know, a, a teenager anymore, and I'm really, my job was... I, it meant nothing to me. I was just trying to make a couple bucks, and I thought, maybe it's time to like commit to something for once in your life. And I'd been thinking for a couple years about writing, but you know, I'd never written anything, and I'd also my, I was an accounting major in college, right? So I had it just thing was going through my head like, well, I missed that boat. Next life, maybe I'll be a writer, you know. <laughs> And it just was gnawing at me for a couple years, like, just write, you know, just go do it. And finally, on my 24th birthday, I thought, I remember th not being happy with who I was. I was just looking at myself like, what? You're a loser. You do nothing. You have no, you're not committed to anything. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to try to write. I'll give myself four years. If I'm 28 and nothing's happening, uh, then, you know, at least I know I would have tried. Because that, that was the first thing I ever went for. And, you know, it's like somebody said, you know, once you... Um, <clears throat> jump in to your dream. You dive, you commit to that dream. Providence comes in. Yeah. It does. And it does it in weird ways. Like, like one thing to another to another. First thing is, I'm a waiter. You know, I got a job as a waiter as I was writing, and I wait on a guy, and he's a writer. And I'm like, really, what do you write? And he's just on vacation, a movie writer. And, and he starts, you know, talking to me, and then he, we become friends. And, I'm, and he's telling me, and I start seeing, oh, okay, this is possible. Then I wait on another guy, and I, he goes, what are you doing? I said, I'm trying to write. He goes, well, you should go to school for writing. I said, I already went to college. He goes, well, there's grad school. I said, really, for writing? He says, yeah, there's creative writing, grad school. I didn't know that. I said, but I couldn't get in anyway because my grades in college were horrible. And he said, no, you could just, it's based on your writing. You submit 35 pages. I said, really? So I, I applied to uh, UMass Amherst, got in there in the creative writing program. My first week there, I thought, uh, by the way, sorry I'm giving short answers. No, 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 I love uh, it. You know, listen, <laughs> we have you here for the next six yes, hours. No. It's for um, six hours okay. we're here. So, uh, <laughs> no problem. The, uh, uh, that w first week, I asked the, the teacher, I said, um, how many guys from last year's program, because we were writing books, I was working on a novel and people were writing short stories, way beyond, before screenplays. I said, how many of the guys from, la you know, the students from last year got their books published? And he said, none. I was like, what? I thought you just wrote books and you got them published. He says, no, we had a guy seven years ago got a book published. I was like, seven years ago? He goes, it's hard to get a book published. I said, oh. Okay, so I remember right away thinking, I gotta transfer to a better program. <laughs> so I looked into it and I transferred to Columbia. And um, uh, so I'm like going up, and in there, by the way, I had 20 people in my class, 15 had their books published within four years of us graduating. It was a whole different world and, you know, anyway, one thing led to another, blah, blah, blah. But you, you also wrote novels. Yeah, I wrote, I wrote a novel. My book got published, it was called Outside Providence. And while I was there, um, I met a buddy of mine, Bennett Yellen, who I met at UMass, and we were thinking, boy, this novel stuff's hard. It takes forever. You know, you two, three years to write a book, and you're going to get 10 grand. You know, it's hard to make a living. Mm -hmm. um, and so we thought, we should write a screenplay, because we knew our dialogue was pretty good. And so we got together, and we wrote a thing. It was called Dust to Dust. We wrote it in about three weeks, just whipped it out, mm -hmm. and it was kind of an early version of Dumb and Dumber. Uh, like, there were a lot of scenes right in there, like the bird's head falling off, all that kind of stuff that were in, in there. And we uh, got it out to some people, and uh, the Zucker brothers read it, who had done, like, Airplane and yeah. those things. And they said, come on, they flew us out. They said, we want you to write a screenplay, and suddenly I was in the biz. Uh, wow. That's how you started? That was my first job, uh, yes. And tel for television? Or uh, no, they had us write a screenplay. Then I, I got here, and for nine years, I was writing screenplays, like, getting paid to. I was pitching them, you know, setting them up all over town, but couldn't get any made. Nine years, until Dumb and Dumber was the first one. The first one me. you made, but th you did that with your brother, right? My brother jumped on board around then. When did he, when is his writing thinking that he wanted to be a writer? I mean, how did you guys decide? I pulled him in. He was out, he was selling round beach towels. <laughs> yeah, they invented the world's first round beach towel. And it was called Sunset. Spot. 
<laughs> and the idea was, you know, as the sun moves, you, rather than move your towel, you just move your body. <laughs> but it turns out people don't mind moving their body. They get up. So wh why not do that, you know? And, um, and, and they were trying to do that until, uh, and they actually got a patent pending, you know, on the round towel. Until, because they figured, you know, brands, you know, Coke and Budweiser, you know, it'd be a nice advertising thing. And then they, somebody sued them, said, you can't, you know, you can't patent a round towel. So they went to court and the, the judge uh, ruled against them. In his ruling, he said, let, let me get this straight. He said, are you, are you trying to patent the circle? <laughs> like, towel. <laughs> like, no. You can't pat in a circle. You know, that was that. But all of a sudden, but he had incredible writing abilities. Yeah, well, no, he was like, he, my brother was hilarious, and whenever I wrote a screenplay, I always gave it to him, and he'd go through it, and he'd punch it up, and he'd say, take that, I don't like this, move that, and he had been doing that for me for three, four years, and then when his towel company got, you know, I said, why don't you, why don't you write with us? So he came in, and it was me, him, and Bennett Yellen. Unbelievable. Yeah. Now, the first film that you were so successful is Dumb and Dumber. Yes. But what's interesting is that the title made people not want to read it. Uh, but yeah. no one, you couldn't get anyone no. to do this movie because it's called Dumb and Dumber, and nobody wants to be in a movie called Dumb and Dumber. Yes. <laughs> and it, like now, you know, it's not what it is now. Like then, I give it to guys again. I'm not going to give Dumb and Dumber to my client. They'll fire me. I was like, all right. <laughs> so, so we, uh, we changed the title to A Power Tool is Not a Toy, which was a, 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 a song I had heard um, uh, by this band called The Young Adults. And um, so we called it that, and everybody thought, wow, what a cool name. And they started, started reading it. Everybody read it, and then we got Jim Carrey, and then we went back to Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> Yeah. Let's hear it for that. Yeah. 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 You know, what what interests me is what makes you run? What is it that keeps you going? Because you have this great personality. Oh, thanks. And you just sort of bounce back. Even all the things that are happening with this movie, yeah. it's up yeah. there, you know, they're knocking you, whatever. Yeah. How do you how do you keep yourself going? Because you have this great personality and you're just still staying positive. What okay, I'm going to tell you something. I'm not going to go into this a lot because I'm not a religious guy at all. I'm right. not. But when I quit my job to be a writer, there was, you know, it's just me and n all alone. My friends thought I lost my mind. You know, they're like, what are you doing? I was like, uh, right. And they're like, oh, fucking Hemingway all of a sudden. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, and why do people want to read your shit piece? I was like, <laughs> Yeah, you know, that's part of like what you're doing. You all, you probably all know this. Yeah. When when you committed to what you're doing, you get ridiculed. You know, like because and by the way, odds are against you. Like you're getting into something that's not a sure thing at all. So it takes a lot of courage, uh, but and that to overcome that fear. You know, it's a lot of fear. Like Jesus, what am I doing? This is odds are it's not going to work out, right? But that, that fear is your friend because if not for that fear, everybody in the world would do what you did. Right. Yes. They would. They all have that. They can't do it. They're like, eh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go get a regular job. You know, most people. And when I did my thing, you know, I had no, nobody, my, my friends think I lost my mind. It made no sense that I was writing. I wasn't even a big reader. You know, and it was just like I could, I like telling, like my friends and I, I knew I could be witty and I thought, you know, let me just try this. And, um, and I remember in the, like at night I'd be all pumped up, like, you know, as I'm writing away and I'm thinking, this is getting good, you know, and all jazz. but in the morning I'd wake up, like, oh, fuck. You idiot, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, you're sitting in like some motel room that I'm renting for like $10 a night because it's off season on Cape Cod and I got a hot plate and I got no, nothing in my life except for just me and I started praying and I would pray like, God, just help me, leave me, please. You know? <laughs> it's just, I got nothing. Just, just take me in the right direction. And I swear to God and I remember and I look back at it now and it was like, I do remember feeling like it's just me and you, whoever you are out there. If you're there, help me out. I swear to God. And, and I always do pray. And, I, and it's not a religious thing at all. It's not like any religion I don't believe in. I, you know, whatever. Whatever religion you are, it doesn't matter. But I, I did, uh, and I still do that. Like, when I get up in the morning, you know, you take your lumps in this business. I'm like, come on, just please help me get through this. I want to... Be a good guy, you know, I want to spread love, keep positive attitude, help me out, you know. 
It's unbelievable. Because let's hear from you. Well, you're such a man. You are such a man. You are an inspiration. You, have, you are really. You are such a, a mensch is the only Thanks. word I can you say. Oh, thank you. Where his humanity and, the, and his love of his art, that even all the things that you've been hit, you're still standing. Yeah, well, you gotta, you know, you just gotta be, you know, you also learn and grow. You're not always right. Like, I fucked up here and there, and you just, sorry, you know, I'm yeah. sorry, I wanna change and be better, and, you know, like, you know, you just grow, hopefully grow. But, um, you know, it's just. Again, I don't want to go more into that. <laughs> no, no, no. We don't. I'm not, that's not my thing. It's not like you gotta, you gotta, you know, buy, get a Bible and search. No, <laughs> it's not that. It's just like, but I, but I. By the, by the way, I do talk about in yeah. my classes yeah. that you couldn't be in in any kind of art form if you're not spiritual because you have to be connected. Because mm. I believe that whatever you're coming is coming from some source. Exactly. It's not coming from you. It's coming no. through you. You have no so, control. So you over have to be it. open to I, your instincts, not to your mind, but to your instincts, and that's what you're talking yeah, about and to a higher power exactly and i'm wide open to it like i'm like a believer i'm wide open i keep my heart open and it's you know i was the worst student in high school i was the worst student in college i had no but i didn't really you know i wasn't into anything and so when i started writing i knew like i have a disadvantage in that you know i'm a late bloomer you know i'm in my mid-20s and i really haven't i've read like five novels in my life <laughs> I remember, this is God's honest truth, in my first day of grad school, we went around the, the room and everybody, he asked, uh, what's your favorite book? And, you know, everybody went around and I think I, mine was a Hardy Boys book or something. No, it wasn't. But it was, uh, <laughs> it was, you know, everybody read, and I wrote down each book and I thought, okay, I gotta read all these. I gotta catch up. And I started reading like a lunatic. Like I would, you know, it was just me. Again, it was all by myself. So on the weekends, I'd read two, three books. But I remember somebody said their favorite book was The Great Gatsby. And I, I read it, and for some reason, I had gotten it in my head that The Great Gatsby was a pirate ship. <laughs> I just thought it was this big pirate ship. Who the hell knows why I got that? When I was a little kid, I heard it, thought it was a pirate ship. And I'm, I'm like three quarters of the way through, and I'm like, where the fuck is this ship? <laughs> when does he get the ship? <laughs> so God's out of truth. I mean, I was... I was that bad. I knew nothing. I, and, and, and so I always came in knowing, you, I got to work harder. I better, because everybody else, they had studied English or English lit, and, you know, they seemed to have an advantage. So I just outworked them, kind of. I just kept, you know, reading and reading and reading and reading. Anything I'd catch, you know, I just wanted to catch up. And, and also, that's the idea of, like, of writing, is that where does it come from? You know, why does a band have five great albums in seven years and then nothing. It just falls off. Because it stopped. And it, you have no say, you have no, you kind of have no say. You gotta hope it comes, be open to it, and don't quit on it. You know, like people have asked me, you ever get writer's block? No, I mean, that's my natural state is writer's block. It's like, <laughs> it's, it's hard. But you just keep going. You know, every day I sit down, oh, fuck, got nothing. Okay, let's think, what do we have? And then you work through it until there's something coming. And you start with a little, like I always say, I'd rather write shit than nothing. Because shit, you got something to work with. You could make it less shitty and then not horrible, and then decent, and then pretty good, and then good, and then very good, and then excellent. But you got to start with shit. No, nope. when you read a book it, or a screenplay and you think, "Wow, I can never do this," well, don't forget that guy didn't start. That person didn't start with that. They started with shit <laughs> that they fix and 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 fix, and fix, and fix until it's decent. And you see it, and when it starts getting good, you start feeling it, you know? And uh, so, yeah, you gotta just be open, because it's not, it's not, I don't know where it's coming from, but it's not like, you know, you gotta be open to it. It's from the universe. Is there any suggestions that you could give to writers? Because we have several writers here. Any kind of suggestions that you can give besides being open? Anything, any kind of writing information? I mean, because you also won an Academy Award for, for Best Screenplay, right? Let's hear it for Peter for that. Thank you. Thank you very much. 